So, got my Harley going. Uh, my Harley Davidson golf cart. Just need to wait for the carburetor to come back. I did have it running. Uh, well, fired up on starting fluid, I guess, if that counts. Um, I mean, it took off across the floor uh, because there was, you know, I stepped on the gas and stuff, sprayed some in there, it fired right up. Uh, and no, I didn't just put a battery in it and it go. I did a lot of work to get this thing to do that. Number one, I got to show you what I had to do. Um, points and condensers. Uh, original points, as you can see, they're all like they were, all rusted and stuff. But cleaned up that center gap. There they work. Um, there's a small blue spark jumping across there, but I was told that's normal as long as it's not yellow and stuff. Uh, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, because, hey, points are cheap, and they come in your tune-up kit, so, um, you need to get a cover for that, there was no cover on it, so, I'll find some of that stuff and everything, uh, so, number one, I went to clean the carburetor, bowl jet broke, didn't even make it tight, end of story there, um, so, what they're doing is, since they don't make parts for the carburetor, the mower shop I took it to, they're, um, they're modifying, uh, the jet off the Cumpsy carburetor, uh, to fit that one, so I figured, all right, that sounds like a good idea. I could have done the same thing to it in uh, my shop that I work at, well, in my tech shop. So, and could have done the same thing, but I figured, hey, what the heck, they're gonna do it. I figured they have it done by the day they would have done it while I was there, but apparently not. I'm still waiting for it, so hopefully tomorrow they'll call. I know they didn't call today because today's e wouldn't call today because today's Ether Easter. Uh, so, anyways, let me take out the plug. And the only reason why I'm doing this is to show you number one that it has spark and prove that I had it running. And uh, I'm sure you guys would believe me, anyways. But it did run and uh, ran. It fired up pretty quick since this runs both ways and stuff and everything. And since, as you know, this has a really good spark, uh, golf carts, they generally have a hotter spark to them. Because number one is, uh, you want them to fire up as soon as you touch the gas, it's going to turn the starter motor over. So, they're designed so that way they fire up real quick, like a high, really fast starting design. And, uh, sometimes if you have trouble with that, I know a lot of times the stock plugs are actually side-gapped, and I'll show you what that means too. But, anyways, here's, a. Uh, how it goes. Uh, fuel pump kicks in, got everything working there. Solenoids clicking before everything was dead, nothing would work. Um, so, uh, let me show you how it cranks over. This is reverse, forward, engine starts up two ways. That's why it has this type of coil on it instead of the uh, flywheel uh, mounted coil. Uh, so that way you can start up both ways and it would still get the correct timing. And um, it's a two stroke, so it has that ability, and it has the points condensers too. So, let me show you the spark on this thing, it's pretty wicked. Let me just back the light away. So let me show you one thing else this is plastic here. Let me set the spark plug on there. Watch. Even on top of the plat. Even on top. I'm sorry, I heard. I thought I heard something. Even on top of the plastic, it's conducting. It's that wicked spark. So that's one thing, and it, it fired right up. On starting fluid, two strokes. They kind of have a hard time doing that because the uh, fuel has to enter through the crankcase so it works almost better with a choke type system on with a carburetor and that's original coil and stuff both had water in them so uh, this one had like water trapped between the uh, wire here and stuff and everything was wet and rusted and uh, this water trapped inside the points big puddle of it actually it filled in that whole groove there so this thing definitely sat outside it's an 85 by the way and I looked that up online they tell you the number, uh, it's a C5, so, yeah, just waiting on a carb, freed up the choke cable, I'm not sure if I showed you that that was seized up, and, you know, everything's working, fuel pump's kicking in, gotta stop pushing in that pedal, 
It's got a brand new battery, but I'm not sure if I explained this, but it was in that boat, and um, that was replaced brand new, like how many years ago, and stuff, and sat dead for a while. It's a marine battery, they last a little better, and a Duralast, which is also a good brand, but now, if you let a battery sit uncharged for many years, all I can say is you'll be lucky if it's going to work. Even a year is too much. Anyways, I uh, drained the gas out of the tank. And uh, there's still water in it because I washed it out. Because the gas is really, really nasty. It wasn't going to burn at all, probably. I even tried putting it in like a cheap chainsaw or something that I have. You can see there's still a few water drops on this right there. And a little bit of dirt. Some of it's just embedded on the bottom and stuff. But, yeah, I got out when I possibly could. And I have a few lines going down there. It's just a plastic line with a little strain on the end so that way the dirt don't get inside. I get a few lines and stuff now. And I uh, have fuel filter there. Uh, and I just have some seal all sealant um, on there. And that one has the rubber boot. This is uh, the line coming in. Go through the fuel pump, and I'll show you how I have this set up. It's nothing special, just to uh, bring the fuel up into the, and then take over by gravity system. And all it does is it sucks the fuel in, and it comes there till it brings the fuel down to the carburetor, and to uh, keep just a little bit of pressure on it, it actually puts it back in the tank, and it's a smaller fitting at the end here. Well. Uh, and it just puts maybe not even a pound of pressure on there. Um, just a real little bit, you know. Just to make up for like a gravity fed carburetor. And uh, that works really good. And that's how they have them set up. So, And I just have that fuel pump clamped on there. With the zip tie. Uh, need to do the brakes yet. Uh, they work just a little bit. But the one pad doesn't grab right, so I'll figure out why it's doing it. Make it look. I guess it just actually might just need to be adjusted in more. Uh, you know, tightened up. Like, I could probably adjust it there. I did spray some pen lube on it. Um, but, yeah, I think it just needs to grab a little tighter. I don't think it's grabbing enough. As you can see there, it's only not even pulling that pin up halfway. It's kind of funny, it, before it was actually just pushing this whole thing back, but after I put the lube on it, it actually started to pull that other pad closer, so I think I just need to just adjust everything and stuff. Sprayed some pen lube on that so I can change the differential oil and stuff. So yeah, everything's working good so far on it, and everything's going good. I had nothing but good luck except for that carburetor issue with the bowl nut breaking, but everything else, oh, I've been having good luck with. Can't believe it, and I thought, it, I looked at this thing, I seen so much that I thought was wrong with it and stuff that I thought I'd never get it running. Turns out, all I kind of really needed was that key. I had the battery and everything else. Uh, it was kind of amazing. Uh, you know, debating whether I want to get the starter motor rebuilt because it ain't cranking over real fast here. Let me show you. Yeah, actually, it kind of hesitates before it cranks it over. Here, let me switch it over into a forward. The engine runs both ways, by the way. That's a two-smoker. That's why two-strokes are common on golf carts. Yeah, I would have did the complexity and take it over, you know, with a four-stroke. And then put maybe a transmission on it. Centrifugal clutch. It's actually the exact same clutch that you see on a snowmobile. The exact same.